Welcome to Made Free Church Online Bible Study. I am glad you're here. Whether you're joining us on YouTube or Facebook or listening on the Made Free Church or Tactical Bible Guy podcasting platforms. I am glad you're here. Thank you and God bless you. Good morning, everybody. It's Pastor Randy here with Made Free Church. I hope you guys are having a great morning. I know that I am. I got my coffee. You know, I got, oh, dang it. I always forget to do that, man. You know, <laughs> you know, I, I wake up in the morning, man. I, and I start getting ready and I listen to the Bible online and on, on my phone and stuff. And I always forget to take out my, ear, my earbuds. Anyway, so uh, we're going to be in. We're going to start our our uh, second Samuel today, man. And what a joyous time this is. We're going to be talking about, you know, we're going to be in second Samuel chapter one, verses one through 10. And we're going to be talking about lessons on facing grief with faith, right? So, you know, whether you're, you're, you're joining us on, uh, uh, on YouTube and Facebook or, or listening through our made free church and our tactical Bible guy podcast, I am so thrilled that you're here today so let's pray heavenly father as we gather in this you know in this space lord and and uh, you know we come before you with grateful hearts thank you for the gift of technology that allows us to connect learn and grow in our faith transcending physical boundaries today we lift up our study lord to you in the midst of 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 the words penned centuries ago we seek the living relevant truth that resonate in our lives today. Lord, we acknowledge the universal experience of grief, the grief that touches each and every one of us. Grant us the wisdom to learn from David's response, his honesty, his vulnerability in the face of loss. As we dive into your word, you know, open up our, our hearts to receive the lessons that you have for us. Comfort those among us who are carrying heavy burdens of grief and may this study be a source of healing and hope holy spirit you know we just pray right now to be our guide illuminating the scriptures and helping us apply them in our daily lives we commit this time to you lord asking for your presence to surround us your wisdom to enlighten us and your love to bind us together Lord, we just put on the full armor of God, which it says in Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, Lord. And we just ask, Lord, that you rebuild those hedges of protection, those shields around us. Lord, send your legion of angels down to fight for us and fight with us as we pick up the weapons of warfare, which is the shield of the spirit, which is the shield of faith, Lord, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So we can distinguish and, and fight up the, the enemies and lives of the devil, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for our salvation. We thank you for all that you do. Get this lowly preacher out of the way, Lord, and let your word go forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Right on. So let's dive into today's study, right? Let's acknowledge something that we all share as, you know, a part of a human experience, and that is grief, right? It's a universal emotion. Some of us that all have felt it or we will feel it at, at some point in our lives. You know, grief doesn't discriminate, guys, right? It touches every heart, no matter who you are or where you're from. And that's our, that, that that's where our focus lies today, right? You know, is, uh, you know, as, as we're diving into this passage, right, that captures deeply the human moment, right? You know, it, David's reaction to the news of Saul's death, right? David wasn't just receiving news about any ordinary person. It was about Saul, the very king who had once sought his life. And, and not just Saul, but but Jonathan, his, his, his dearest friend, right? So why is this passage so significant? Well, 
it's not just an historical account of a king's demise. It's a window into the raw, unfiltered, uh, unfiltered emotions of a man after God's own heart. David's response to grief teaches us some lessons about how we can navigate the stormy seas of loss in our own lives. You know, in, in, in a world that really, you know, often masks pain or or, or feel uh, feel the, the you know, uh, mask our pain or, or feel pressure, you know, to put on a, a brave face, right? David's vulnerability becomes a guiding light. His, on uh, his authenticity uh, in expressing grief before God is a powerful example for us, right? It shows that it's okay to feel the weight of our emotions and bring them to the one who understands them best, right? So here we are, you know, uh, not just dissecting the ancient text, but uncovering timeless truths that resonate with our own experiences, Right. It, 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 the Bible is not di not a distant or a, a irrelevant book. It's a breathing guide that speaks to the core of our humanity. You know, as we uh, uh, journey through, you know, Second Samuel today, let's keep our hearts open to the lessons, you know, in, in, uh, uh, to the lessons of David's response, you know, and, and, and what it holds for us. Right. You know, how did he process his grief? Right. What can we learn uh, about turning to God in times of sorrow? You know, th these are the questions we'll be exploring together. And I believe the insights that we gain will be both relevant and comforting. You know, grief is, is, is a tough road to navigate, right? But we're not alone in this journey, right? So grab your coffee, settle in. Let's unpack the richness of God's word together. You know, and, and welcome to a time of learning, reflection, and growth. Amen. So let's read today's passage in 2 Samuel chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. It says this. After the death of Saul, David had returned from striking down the Amalekites. David remained two days in Ziklag. On the third day, behold, a man came from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dirt on his head. And when he came to David, he fell to the ground and paid homage. And David said to him, where do you come from? And he said to him, I have escaped from the camp of Israel. And David said to him, how did it go? Tell me. And he answered, the people fled from the battle and so many people have fallen and are dead. And Saul and his sons are also. And Saul and his son, Jonathan, his son, jo Jonathan are also dead. David said to the young man who told him, how do you know that Saul and his son, Jonathan are dead? And the young man told him and, and said, by chance, I happened to be on Mount Gilboa. And there was Saul leaning on his spear and behold, the chariots and the horsemen were close upon him. And he and, and and when he looked behind him, he saw and he called to me and I answered, here I am. And he said to me, where are you? And I answered, I am an Amalekite. And he said to me, stand beside me and kill me for the anguish has seized me. And yet my life still lingers. So I stood behind him and killed him because I saw I was sure that he would he could not live after he had fallen and i took the crown that was on his head and the armlet that was on his arm and i have brought them here to my lord all right guys <laughs> um so let's take a little journey back in time right into the world of second samuel verses one uh, chapter one, verses one and two. And, and, and you got to picture this, right? Saul, the big shot king of Israel, strutting around with his crown, leading the charge against the Philistines. Now Saul and David, well, their relationship was like a roller coaster ride, right? And, and not the smooth kind, right? Saul was once cool with David, <coughs> even letting him hang out in the royal court. 
But then jealousy kicked in, right? And it all started eyeing David like he was the next big threat to his kingdom. Now, as the Philistines and uh, Israel were, were locking horns in a heavyweight battle, right? Things are getting intense, right? Saul and his son, Jonathan, are in the thick of it, right? So let's fast forward to, to the messengers, the, you know, the poor guy tasked with delivering the news. You know, in ancient times, there were no breaking news alerts or fancy smartphones. You know what I mean? It, it was it, It's all about a dude hauling himself across the battlefield with some serious news to spill. Now, imagine the tension in the air, you know, uh, when the messenger finally reaches David. Right. News was a a a was a, a big deal back then. Right. And not just because it could mess up your day, but it had a it had the power to shape destinies and it, of, of of an entire nations. Right. So it's in those moments, you know, waiting for news, communities held their breath. Right. The delivery of the message could bring joy. Or sorrow or even morning news traveled like wildfire, you know, not, not like fiber optics or satellites, but through the legs of messengers who ran like their lives depended on it. Right. And often they did, right. The, the impact of the news in ancient times was, was, was profound. It was, it rippled through the hearts of the individuals and resonated in the collective soul of a community. Now apply that right to verses one and two like saul the once mighty king is now dead right the 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 the, the battle's dust has settled the messenger stands before david and it's not just about saul's demise it's about the shifting tides of power the echoes of war and the personal connection between the messenger and david now picture david on the edge of his seat as the messenger relays the events of the battlefield the weight of the news hits him right saul and jonathan his friend are gone the, the the impact that the messenger isn't just personal it's political it's emotional and it's the turning point in david's journey so why does this matter because understanding the context paints a vivid picture of the swirling emotions the complex relationships and the societal upheaval that uh uh second samuel chapter one verses one and two has steeped in right now it, it, it's it's not just history it's a snapshot of the messy unpredictable drama that unfolds when people power and unpredictability of life collide and we're seeing that in our own political backdrop today right so as we peel back the layers of this passage let's keep in mind the gravity of receiving news in the ancient times right it, it, it's not just a, a plot point it's the heartbeat of the narrative that invites us to feel to empathize and to reflect on the timeless threads that weave through the human experience right so um now you know we're 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 about to dive into the next chapter of second Samuel saga, right? The messenger's report, right? Now, now picture this guys. So dust is settling on the battlefield. The air is thick after the aftermath of the war. And in the midst of it all, here comes the guy, the messenger, right? The bearer of news that is about to send shock waves through David's world. Right. And we're not talking about your, your average mail delivery here. This messenger isn't just a drop off of a postcard, right? He's carrying the weight of the kingdom's fate on his shoulders, right? Now imagine him, sweaty, breastless, racing against time to reach David, right? Now, now he's not just a guy with a message. He's the living conduit of history, right? Charged with the task of delivering the news that's going to change everything you know and as as the messenger arrives right i can almost i can almost see the anticipation in david's eyes right the air is charged with with strange mix of anxiety and and curiosity and and there he stands right and that this ordinary messenger guy holding the key to the narrative shift that will reverberate through generations now 
let's step into the you know that let, 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 let's let's step let, let's sort of step into the the messenger stews for a moment right and and kind of see this right now you, you you can probably anticipate the tension that's in the air as he approaches david right he's not just a news anchor reading off a teleprompter right he's a witness to the chaos and carnage of the battle right that the images of saul and jonathan uh, last moment are imprinted on his mind and as he carries the burden as he delivers the news right so so picture the weight of his voice the pause between words as he relives the scenes that he witnessed and, and this isn't a detached recounting of events it's a raw first-hand account of the highs and lows of war right he, he's not just a messenger he's a storyteller painting a vivid picture with his words and david his eyes must have been fixed on the on the messenger hanging on every word like a lifeline right the, the emotional roller coaster that he's about to ride is just the beginning and the messenger is the guide navigating through the peaks and valleys of grief so now let's talk about the emotional weight of this message right it, it, it's not just a, a bullet point list of casualties it's the narrative loaded with personal connections right saul the once mighty king and jonathan david's david's confidant and best friend right that the messenger isn't delivering just just delivering the, the news he's delivering a shattering of illusions right and the crushing blow of reality you know, as as the words escape the messenger's lips, you can almost sense, right, the collective gasp from those listening. It, it's not just it's not just a ripple of sorrow; it's a tidal wave of grief that crashes into the hearts of everyone present. The emotional weight of the message isn't confined to David alone; it envelops the entire community, leaving them grappling with the fragility of life and the unpredictability of fate. So in, in the grand tab, tapestry, we're going to start looking at verses three and four, right? The messenger's report isn't just a plot device. It's a touching reminder of the, of, of the human cost in conflict, right? The toll it takes on individuals who come, be, who, who become a witness to history, right? So as we unpack this, this, these verses, right? Let, let, let's not just skim the surface, right? Let's dive into the emotional depths, emphasizing, uh, uh, empathizing, you know, with the messenger, feeling the weight of his words and recognizing the, the impact that they have on the narrative and the hearts of those who hear him. So like we're, you know, we're about to, really look at and to dive into a roller coaster of emotions that David's reaction here, right? So picture this. The messenger has spilled the beans, right? That the news of Saul and Jonathan's deaths hanging heavy in the air, right? What 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 does David do? He doesn't just do, you know, just doesn't do that that the polite head nod to move on. Oh no, he dives head first into the whirlwind of grief. And, and first off, you know, let's talk about grief, right? David does not hold back, but, you know, he he, he lets it wash over him like a tidal wave, right? It, it's not some stoic poker face reaction. No, it's a gut-wrenching, heart-aching grief, uh, the kind of grief that, that leaves you breathless, right? And David, well, he's not afraid to show it, right? It, the, the tears are flowing, the sobs are echoing through the room. And he's in the raw, messy, unfiltered throes of sorrow. You know, it, 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 it's, it's about tearing his clothes. In our modern world, it may seem like a dramatic move. But back then, you know, this was serious business, right? It, it, it's a visual cue, a physical manifestation of David's internal anguish. Now imagine, you know, the, the sound of fabric ripping, echoing the, sh uh, the uh, echoing the shattering of David's world in, in, in that moment. You know, it, it's, it's not about fashion, guys. It's about a man laid bare, his outward appearance mirroring the brokenness within, you know. But, but, but here's where it gets interesting. Let's talk about David's lament for Saul and Jonathan. You, you, would, you would expect some bitterness, right? I mean, Saul, 
did spend a good chunk of time trying to pin David to the wall with a spear. And yet, what does David do? He pours out his heart in lament. That That's not just for, for show, but it's genuine. It's authentic, right? And, 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 and it's soaked with, in sorrow. So, so David's voice tinged with sadness, recounting that the, the might of Saul on the battlefield, right? You know, it's not a laundry list of grievances, right? It's a eulogy of the fallen king. And David doesn't focus on the negative. He doesn't revel in, in Saul's demise. Instead, he lifts up Saul's strength, his achievements, his valor, right? It's, it's a tribute to a complicated man acknowledging the layers beneath the crown. And then there's Jonathan. David's kindred spirit, right? The, the lament for him is art heart wrenching. It, it's not just about a loss of a comrade; it's about the end of a friendship that transcends political turmoil. David doesn't shy away from expressing the the depth of his connection with Jonathan. It's not just a a, a casual "he's a good guy" speech, right? It's 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 a soul stirring recognition of the bond that went beyond the battlefield. What strikes me most about the authenticity of David sorrow, sorrow it, it's not pr performative, right? It, it's not it, it's not just for an audience. David's grief is private, right? Is is a private, sacred moment laid bare for us to witness, right? That that in a world where where we often mask our true emotions, David stands as a testament to the power of vulnerability. He doesn't hold back. And, and, and in doing so, he invites us to embrace our own humanity, the, the messy, complicated, deeply emotional side of it. You know what I mean? And, 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 and let's just not skim the surface here. You know, let's immerse ourselves in the rawness of grief. You know, let the tears flow and recognize the beauty of expressing sorrow without reservation. David's reaction isn't just a historical footnote, guys. It's an invitation for us to embrace our own emotions, to mourn openly, to find healing and authenticity of our grief. Right? So let's chat about some real talk, right? Facing grief with faith, you know, inspired by the legendary David. Now, we've just witnessed him go through an emotional ringer in 2 Samuel. Right. And, 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 and what, but, 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 but what can we take away from, from this roller coaster sorrow in, in tears? Well, it, let's, let's kind of break it down. First off, let's talk about David's authenticity, expressing his emotions before God. Like this dude doesn't hold back, right? He's, he's not putting on a brave face and pretending everything's okay. No, he lays it all out there. The tears, the wailing, the torn crows, he clothes. It, it's like an emotional fireworks display and God gets front row seat. David does not shy away from his true feelings to, to be this big guy, uh, to, to the big guy upstairs. No, that's a powerful lesson right here, right? Now, here's the thing. We live in a world that often tells us to keep our emotions in check, to put on a stoic front. But David, he flips the script, right? He teaches us that it's okay to be real with God. You know, whether it's it's anger, sadness, confusion, God can handle that, right? There's no need for polished, sanitized version of ourselves in his presence. So if you're feeling a bit messy, a bit broken, take a page from David's book. Spill it out before God because he is not afraid of your authenticity. So let's, you know, so let's talk about the importance of acknowledging and processing grief in healthy ways, right? David just didn't sweep his emotion under the rug, right? He faced them head on. And, and, and that's a crucial lesson for us. Grief isn't something you can ignore or, or rush through. It's messy. It's complicated. And the demands our attention. We shouldn't just put it all inside. We, we need to let it out. We need to cry. We need to weep. David didn't shy away from the pain. Instead, he embraced it. He processed it. I mean, he laid it before God. You know, in our own lives, when grief knocks at our door, you know, we, we might be tempered to dodge it or, or drown it out with some distractions. 
But David shows us that true healing comes from, comes when we confront our grief. It's, it's not a sign of weakness. It's steps towards healing. So let's be real with ourselves, right? And with God about our pain. You know, it's a journey, not a sprint. And it's okay to take the time to navigate it. Now let's talk about vulnerability and trust God during, you know, times of loss, right? David doesn't just throw a pity party, right? Right. He intertwines his grief with the deep trust in God, right? It's like he's saying, okay, life is tough right now for me, God, but I'm placing my trust in the one who holds it all together. There's strength in vulnerability in admitting that we can handle it all and admitting that we can't handle it all on our own. You know, in our culture, vulnerability often see as seen as, as weakness, but David flips the script. Right. He shows us that vulnerability is a mark of authentic faith, acknowledging our need for God, right? Our dependence on his strength in the midst of our weakness. So, you know, if you're feeling like you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders, take a cue from David, lay it before God, be vulnerable and trust that he's got you. Lastly, let's talk about turning to God in our grief and finding solace and comfort in his presence, right? David doesn't wallow in despair. He turns to God as the source of his comfort. It's not a one-time thing. It's a continuous seeking God's presence. And, and here's the beauty. God meets him in the place of sorrow, right? So for us, when grief hits us, remember that we're not alone. God's not standing at a distance arms crossed watching our struggles he's right there with us offering solace comfort understanding and peace that goes beyond our understanding instead of carrying the weight on our own shoulders let's invite god into the process right his presence is a game changer a balm for our wounded hearts amen so facing grief with faith isn't about having all the answers or putting on a brave front. It's about being real, acknowledging the pain, turning to God in your vulnerability. David's journey through grief, uh, uh, grief teaches us that there's strength and authenticity, healing in processing our emotions and comfort in trusting God's presence. So if you're navigating the storm of grief, remember this, you're not alone. And there's God who invites you to bring your heartache to him. And it's okay to be real. It's okay to grieve. It's okay to lean on the one who offers solace and comfort in the midst of it all. You know, keep the faith, right? And, and know that in your darkest moments, there's a glimmer of hope in the arms of a loving God. So we've taken quite a journey into the heart of David's response here, you know, to grief in 2 Samuel chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Now let's wrap it up, tie a little bow on it, right? And leave with some takeaways that uh, can light up our own path through, this, through the shadows of sorrow. First off, let's do a, uh, a quick recap of some key points that we've uncovered in David's emotional roller coaster, right? Now, we kicked off things by acknowledging the universal experience of grief. It's something that we all face, no matter who you are, or where you're from, right? Then we dove into the contextual background, setting the stage for the epic drama of Saul's reign, his rocky relationship with David and the battle against the Philistines. And we witnessed the arrival of the, the messenger, you know, the dude with the news that would change everything, right? The weight of delivering the news in ancient times wasn't about just about information. It's about shaping the destiny of, of individuals and communities. And then we we dove into to David's reaction, the tears, the torn clothes, the gut-wrenching lament for Saul and Jonathan. It was raw, unfiltered expressions of grief and the authentic outpouring of emotions that we can all relate to. You know, moving on uh, to the lessons that we've learned uh, from David's response, we discovered the power of authenticity and expressing our emotions before God. David didn't sugarcoat his pain. He laid it all out there. 
you know, tearing the mask off and showing God it, it, his true self. Right. We, we talked about the importance of acknowledging and processing grief in healthy ways. You know, taking the time to confront the pain instead of brushing it aside. Then we explored how David's response modeled the vulnerability and trust in God during times of loss. Instead of putting on the tough exterior, he embraced the vulnerability, showing us the true strength as found in admitting our need for God. And finally, we talked about turning to God in our grief and finding solace and comfort in his presence. David didn't walk the road of sorrow alone. He invited God into the process, seeking comfort and strength in his arms, in the arms of, of his creator, his God. Now let's bring it home, folks. In the midst of our own struggles with grief, you know, let's not forget the roadmap, right? Of Dave that David has laid out for us, right? It's not about, you know, having all the answers or plastering a fake smile. It's about being real, embracing our vulnerability and turning to the one who holds the universe in his hands. So guys, as we navigate the twists and turns of life, especially in the moments when grief knocks out the door, let's follow David's example. You know, seek God's comfort and strength. Don't shy away from expressing your true emotions before him. You know, acknowledge the pain, process it in healthy ways, and trust that your vulnerability, God's strength is made perfect. <laughs> so we're not alone in this journey, guys, right? You know, our creator, the one who knows us inside and out and who is sovereign, right, invites us to lean on him, find solace and comfort in his presence. Knowing that even in the darkest moments, there's a glimmer of hope, flicker of light that guides us through the shadows. So keep the brave, so so keep the faith, embrace in vulnerability, and remember that in the tapestry of of grief, God weaves a story of healing and redemption. You know, let's walk this path together, leaning on the source of comfort and strength that never runs dry. Right. And in doing so, you know, may we discover a peace that goes beyond our understanding. Right. So let's keep the, the faith burning bright. You know, I saw a video the other day of a girl. One of my buddies sent it to me, man. And it was it was really cool. It was a girl about talking about keeping that that fire lit, that light, that faith burning so bright in us. Right. You know, that 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 we need it. And, and the only way that that happens is through prayer and reading of his word, reading the Bible, you know, and 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 sharing the gospel with others. What a profound way of looking at it. Right. So, guys, we just had a heart to heart about grief, walk, walk through the ups and downs of David's journey and unpack some nuggets of wisdom. But before we wrap up, you know, let's talk about how we can take these principles and apply them in our own lives. First off, it's about reflection, right? Y'all need to take a moment to think about how David's response resonates with your own experiences. Maybe you face grief or, or watch the friend go through it. How can you bring that raw authenticity into your own relationship with God? Are there areas in your life where you need to acknowledge and process grief, you know, to tear off meta your metaphorical mask and be real with yourself and with God, right? And let's talk about community, right? Life's a team sport and, and, and we're all in this together. You know, if you know someone who's navigating the stormy seas of grief, be that anchor for them. Reach out and lend an ear, share a comforting word. And, 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 and let's, let's, let's be a church community that doesn't just gather for the good times, but stand strong for each other in the tough times and do this in your own communities, in your own church communities. The strength of a community is, is measured by how we support each other in the messy moments. We're all a part of this, this, this big, beautiful mess together. 
And as we get ready to hit the digital hay or, or go about our day, right? Let me send you off with a blessing, right? And, and here it goes. May you carry the lessons of authenticity, vulnerability, and trust in God with you. May you find strength in acknowledging and processing your grief, knowing that it's a journey worth taking, right? And may you surround, may you, may you be surrounded by a community that lifts you up in tough times, reminding you that you're not alone. And as you step back into the whirlwind of life, right? Trust God's grace and comfort. It's like a safety net that catches you when you, when, when the world feels a bit too much. And remember, you're cherished. You're not alone. There's a bigger story being written in the midst of it all. So guys, go out from here. Embrace and thought authenticity and lend a hand to those in need. And let's meet back here tomorrow for another round of real talk and a heart to heart wisdom. Much love to you guys. But I want, you know, I, I do have a couple announcements before you guys go. Our website is up, right? You know, I've written a few books, Reformation Revived, Apostle John, Walking in the Footsteps of Christ, Recovery and Redemption, Overcoming Relapse, you know, A Warrior's Heart. You know, go out to, to Amazon Books, man, and, and go out to, to uh, uh, Barnes and Nobles and get these books. You know, all these books, um, you know, uh, uh, they support our Believers in Christ Fellowship, which is we go out and bring church to the homeless encampments all throughout, you know, San Bernardino County. So um, guys, help support us. And it also goes to the establishment of our Mary's Ranch, right, which is our, our women and children's discipleship ranch that, uh, uh, you know, that we're looking you know, that we're looking to support and fund, right? We need a, we need a, we need a lot of money to get this up and started, right? So, uh, we've also, uh, you know, if you look on the tactical Bible guy, uh, uh, TikTok, uh, we have a shop on there, crucified clothing, right? And, and, and Etsy, right? And every purchase goes to supporting, you know, uh, the woman's ranch, you know, so it allows us to make a, a meaningful impact. And if you guys want to uh, make a, a direct do donation to Made Free Church, you can do that on our website. We are a 501c3 nonprofit charitable church. So your contributions play a critical role to our, our mission, you know, and, and it, if you choose to make a donation, please leave your email address in the notes section so we can send you a tax deductible receipt. Now, if you've found our teachings inspiring, here's a simple way you can help us as well, right? Spread this message like share and subscribe right your engagement extends our reach and allows more individuals to benefit from the teachings and thank you for being you know ambassadors of the message of hope and faith right so as we as we as as we bring this bible study to a close i want to sincerely thank each and every one of you for being here you know may, may you carry the lessons of today's message in your hearts Right. And may God's blessings uh, continue to accompany in your journey. Go in peace, knowing that you're loved and blessed abundantly. So let's close in prayer. Heavenly Fathers, we wrap up our time here together. Lord, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude. You know, thank you for the moments of reflection, for the lessons that we gleaned here from David's journey, you know, uh, through, through, through uh, uh, Second Samuel. Chapter one, verses one through 10. Lord, we lift up every heart that resonated with this message today. May your grace and comfort wrap around them like a warm embrace. Give us courage to be authentic before you, acknowledging your pain and finding solace and comfort in your presence. You know, for, for those that are uh, navigating turbulent waters of grief, may they feel the support of this this, this online family, right? Empower us to be the source of strength, love, and extending a helping hand to those in need. And as we as we depart here, Lord, may your, your peace accompany us. Bless each person with a renewed strength, knowing that in vulnerability, we can find your unfailing grace. Lord, guide us, you know, in the journey ahead. And may we continue to grow 
bound by love and compassion. In Jesus' name, our comforted, we pray. Amen. 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 So, guys, go in peace. Guys, we'll be here tomorrow. And I hope you guys are enjoying this, man. Share. Guys, like, share, and 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 subscribe, you know, to our, our podcasting platforms, to our YouTube, to, you know, to our Facebook page. It's so important, guys. Lord, we are, guys, we are a community, right, of, of believers going through the walks of life and gleaning, you know, from the pages of scripture. God bless you guys. You guys have a great day.